Someday, in the not so distant future, it happens. The moment you realize you're ready for anything. Get a degree in emergency management from Jacksonville State University and be ready for where you're going. It's a Weather Extreme video. This is for Monday, the 28th of April. I'm James Spann. We have the dual threat of severe thunderstorms and flash flooding for our state for the next couple of days. A lot of things to talk about, so let's get right to it. And anytime you see a look like that, that's just not good for late April. Strong, dynamic, negative tilt, upper trough. That produced a major tornado in Arkansas last night. One long track supercell. The death toll, as I understand it early this morning, is at least 16. And that could go higher. As we get the light of day, we start to see what happened up there. Um, and that uh, is slowly moving in our direction. And that's going to cause some issues later today and tonight. Now, early this morning, we have no problems. Uh, that's the radar at 451. Just a band of showers over northwest Alabama. No severe weather. And I think we'll be okay this morning and early this afternoon. The problems begin later today and tonight. Check the dew points at daybreak. Don't like to see those. The dew point sitting at 67 at Tuscaloosa. Anytime dew points are in the mid-60s or higher in April, that's always a problem sign in terms of severe weather. All 67 Alabama counties under a flash flood watch. And uh, that will be running through at least tomorrow night as very heavy rain is likely could create some flooding problems. You can see flash flood watches also for parts of Mississippi, Georgia, the Florida Panhandle, on up into uh, parts of the Mid-South. And, of course, severe thunderstorms are in progress there. That's a tornado watch until noon today, running from uh, the Piney Woods of East Texas up to parts of Louisiana and the Mississippi Delta, including Greenville and Greenwood. Uh, there are no severe weather watches in our state this morning. Inevitably, there will be later today and tonight. That's the... Convective outlook for today and tonight. The standard slight risk runs from uh, near Jackson and Montgomery and Heflin north. There is no risk of severe weather for southeast Alabama today. The enhanced moderate risk is basically for areas north and west of Birmingham. That moderate risk also include, includes parts of south Tennessee and a pretty good chunk of central Mississippi. These are the tornado probabilities. The higher numbers are in the 15% zone. That means there is a 15% chance of a tornado within 25 miles of any given point in that zone. And, of course, some people are asking, will they go high risk today? And I don't think so. This does not look a high, like a high risk type day. I think that moderate risk is very appropriate. Now, this is tomorrow. There's a second round we'll probably have. Tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, we have the standard slight risk of severe weather for all of Alabama. The higher severe weather possibilities are over the southwestern part of the state, where the air will be more unstable. And that's the big question here for this next round. Tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night, will there be sufficient instability for severe weather? And we'll talk about that as we go. And then on day three, which is Wednesday, the southeastern part of Alabama is in a severe weather risk roughly from Lafayette, Auburn, Opelika, south down to Dothan, and that risk extends over to the South Atlantic coast. Here's the latest QPF chart, and uh, again, the numbers are pretty high for this part of the state, uh, four to five inches for the I-2059 corridor. The bullseye is 5.3 inches down around uh, Auburn and Opelika, and this is valid through Saturday morning, and all this will be basically between now and early Wednesday morning. So if you live in a flood-prone area, be sure that you can get flash flood warnings. All right, this is the uh, modeling here, the GFS, the Global Forecast System, valid today at 1 o'clock. There's your negative tilt trough, a very good difluence aloft in advance of a negative tilt system like that. Underneath that, a 988 millibar low is north of Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, you can see the active weather in the warm sector south and east of the surface low. Uh, the, the, really, this is suggesting the most active weather early this afternoon still will be north and west of here, West Tennessee, North Mississippi. Go to the high-res NAM. This is uh, this evening at 7 o'clock, and a big blob of convection shows up over northwest Alabama. 
And uh, again, with within that, it, it's not going to look like that on radar. Understand that the, this is a four-kilometer model. Thunderstorms are you know much smaller than this. Uh, but at this point, we could see all modes of severe weather. Uh, large hail, damaging wind, maybe an isolated tornado. Now, this is just after midnight. This is 1 a.m., and probably at this point, things begin to consolidate into a more linear mode where the threat becomes flooding and strong straight-line winds uh, just after midnight. So this is round one. Uh, I'd say the main window for this for us would be about uh, 5 o'clock this afternoon until 6 a.m. tomorrow. Now, this is round two. This is tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock, and here comes this next batch of storms in here. And again, this... The, the severity of this will be determined by the, how the atmosphere is worked over tonight. We just don't know if the air can sufficiently destabilize. If we do see severe weather here, I think the main threat will be from hail and straight line winds. Look at the instability. This is tonight at uh, 7 o'clock local time. This is surface base Cape. And those numbers are pretty high in excess of 2,000 joules. Looks like a few spots maybe hitting 3,000 joules. So very unstable air. That means the air is buoyant. Air parcels will rise freely. And, of course, aided by that big trough, there'll, there'll be a lot of good upward vertical velocity. The energy helicity index uh, peaks at uh, looks like about three units in a couple of spots over north Alabama. And, again, that uh, is a composite index of instability and shear, and, and that certainly is favorable for severe storms. There's also a max over north Mississippi tonight. But this is, curiously, this is the one thing that's kind of missing. This is the bulk shear in the really low levels between the surface and 925 millibars. And there's just not that much. And this could be a limiting factor for tornadoes here. Uh, this is the one thing that might really help us. Uh, those values are just not impressive at all. You want to see those bulk shear numbers up in the 20 and 30 knot range. And they're basically non-existent. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Understand, we're not saying there's no chance of tornadoes. There is, but that could be a limiting factor, and certainly the conditions here are not like what they had in Arkansas. They had a lot of bulk shear uh, last night with that big supercell. And that's the low-level jet, 50 knots. That's very adequate for severe weather. So, uh, again, clearly a good chance of strong to severe storms late this afternoon and tonight. And this is tomorrow at, uh, at 1 o'clock, and, again, the question is, can this second round get going Surface low is over uh, Iowa, just uh, southeast of Des Moines. Can the storms redevelop? Well, this is tomorrow night at midnight, and the GFS says yes, they can. And, and really, the name and the GFS says yes, there will be a second wave. We just don't know if it will be a, an issue with severe storms. Certainly, the instability favors that. And again, there's not much here at all with this. So I'd say the bigger issue with this second wave tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, would be from large hail, uh, gusty surface winds and, and the threat of flash flooding. And then this is Wednesday at midday. Things begin to wind down. The rain is south of a line from near Anniston to Mobile. And the rain will be ending from northwest to southeast during the day Wednesday. Here's the QPF totals, by the way, coming off the NAM. And uh, the, the max on this thing is 6.1 inches uh, in a band up there from uh, near Brilliant in Marion County up to about Hazel Green, north of Huntsville. Uh, that 6.1-inch max is in Lawrence County around Moulton. Curiously, for the Birmingham Metro, it doesn't have that much. It's got rain amounts of only 1 to 2 inches, and then it ramps up again south of here. We don't know how these bands are going to set up. It could be this way. You know, you'll have these convective bands oriented from southwest to northeast, uh, and this could be right. Uh, you know, I, I can see how this would pan out, but clearly somebody – around here could see some flooding issues exactly where it's hard to say and again all 67 alabama counties are under a flash flood watch thursday hey the trough axis is still west of here uh, down below that uh, the thickness values are coming down so thursday should be a cooler day and there's a chance highs will be only in the 60s with those lower thickness values but the day looks dry and this is friday again the day would be dry a mixture of clouds and sunshine, the high around 70. Lows, by the way, getting down in the 40s. And this is Saturday as we start the weekend. We still have a mean upper trough over the east, and down below that, the weather looks dry. This is race weekend at Talladega. Looks really nice. Cool mornings, comfortable afternoons. Uh, we'll start the day in the 40s. The high should be in the low 70s. And Sunday would, could not be a better day for racing at Talladega. Bright sunshine with highs in the middle 70s. Just perfect. And a week from today looks dry. 
A few days later, this is the 11th of May, evidence of uh, rain there. And on the 13th, the end of the forecast, that looks dry. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. Notes in the blog throughout the day. Uh, more than likely, we will not be able to provide a second Weather Extreme video since we expect active weather late this afternoon, but certainly we'll have another one by tomorrow morning. And uh, can catch us on ABC 3340 News this evening on the live stream of the television side at 4, 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless.